Uh, hello, welcome to episode 331 of the official podcast. Mario came out today. That's the biggest thing that's happened in history, probably. Chris Pratt's newest role as the small Italian plumber man, Mario. None of us have seen it, so it's not really relevant, but it <laughs> did right, come out today. On. It did come out mm-hmm. today. I just want to put that down in the history books. This is the podcast that came out on the same... Well, it was recorded on the same day as the Mario movie came, came out. Reviews have been... Uh, <laughs> bad I, bad mostly right super middling yeah, not good mm. not good it's like middling right it's not like yeah. offensive it's not like um, it's not emoji movie levels are bad but it's like directly in the middle which is not what I don't know that sounds like the worst possible result you know when they say like the worst thing to do is like be uninteresting and so maybe it's uninteresting maybe it's not so bad that it's entertaining the audience score from what i saw on twitter i didn't confirm it myself i, I don't really care to i'll just take them at their word the audience score is apparently at 98 yeah and, and you also, know what i'm not doing anything else i'll confirm it it's <laughs> also the mario movie meaning it's going to make a shitload of a trillion dollars no matter what it could oh, have yeah. been the worst movie of the year it would still have audience made. score is confirmed 98 wasn't fake news yeah now, did they only <laughs> poll kindergartners, though? Like, what was what's the age range on the uh, audience reviews? Who's able to participate probably, in that? L- probably literally 30-plus. I don't think so kids are, like, the, super into Mario. The trick that I've learned that's pretty fucking consistent is whenever you go on Metacritic, you take the average of the critic score and the audience score, and that gives you the real score for the game. Maybe not as true now with how games journalists and like have become a fucking shallow mess of what they used to be. But uh, in that case, Mario movies got like a seventy-five. You know, why would you? So, why would you not just take? Right. I feel like you would relate more, or I guess the audience score in general would be more trustworthy because it's an aggregate no. of playing oh, as like a ninety-four percent on Rotten no. Tomatoes for the audience score. So what this does? is plain. Yeah, and Jackson, this is this is an old school method from the earlier internet. You, like you got to remember now, so critics have failed us. And then the mass audiences <laughs> will just swallow up everything, you know? Yeah, yeah, you're and, right. And you're not right. only that, not only will they swallow up everything, when they do complain, it is about the stupidest, dumbest, d- worstest bullshit ever. I looked up last night out of curiosity the Metacritic reviews of the new Resident Evil 4 remake, and it's got like a 50, like a 60, like just really low scores compared to the critics of what people are saying. And it's because half the Metacritic reviews are, you can no longer fuck Ashley, uh, Leon's not as goofy, uh, you, you have to like parry instead of, stuff that's just, yeah, it's a different game. No shit. It's, it's not the same game again. Of course they change things. They don't like review the gameplay or any actual things that matter. They just talk about how it's different and say it's like zero out of ten because of it. Yeah, I just feel like I feel as if I would relate more, generally speaking, to audience score than I would critic score. I feel like critic scores have like always. There's never been a uh, Rotten Tomatoes critic score that's come out that I've been like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Like (laughs) Cuties is another example. Big Mouth. Like there's so many that we've been over endlessly it's like i can't take it so you've put me on the side of the general audience now i think mario is a masterpiece and i'll be seeing it twice tonight yeah but general twice. audiences man <laughs> they're so hard to trust too because they just so many of them just want like stimulation not even anything like good or of yeah. substance you, you know also what I mean? have to keep in mind that general Review audience is the well. same one posting on twitter yeah that's true, too. true. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Uh, yeah. But Wait, what? there's nothing. What is... There's nothing Wait, wrong with wanting mean? stimulation from Mario, right? The point was, Kaya, that it's the lobotomites on Twitter. That they're they're the audience score as well. Twitter is small. It's... You could say the same thing about the critics. Oh, I'm not they defending the critics. The critics are also yeah. lobotomites. <laughs> like, just watch it yourself. Yeah. I guess. I mean. Yeah. They, yeah just, that's just There's no like good way of gauging. Well, the, well, we the current meta, the current meta for reviews is you find people online who have similar tastes to you yeah. and then judge their opinion. So if Charlie makes a moist meter on the movie and he's like, oh, I liked it, I give it a 90, then people who watch him and go, well, I like a lot of the stuff Charlie does. So that's a good recommendation. 
you know that otherwise you have to listen to fucking like harold von goober split who g- gives random movies random scores and goes oh i've been a movie professional movie critic for 20 years and it's like do i trust you this is all over the place i don't know if our tastes align we well, have to be pretty good at it if he's been doing it for 20 who's years, that though. guy charlie you might know or kaya who's that guy he's like a professional movie critic and all he ever does is give contrarian opinions on everything oh, oh yeah that's a movie bob no no no, 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 no. I think his last name's I think his last name's White, isn't it? It might be. I think it is White. But all he ever does is he will find the most unanimously popular films and write just like really scathing reviews. Yeah, I remember oh, when we man. talked about this like years White? ago. Yeah, people uh, say I think it is Armin White. White. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the right one. I think yeah, it's Armin White. Did. Donkey made a whole video on him at one point. Yeah, we did talk to him. Uh, talk about him on the show. So yeah, that that guy is wild. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think his think opinion f- on Mario has been? Positive or negative? I'll, I'll look right now. I'm sure you reviewed it. Yeah. I'm also looking. Actually, he doesn't have one. He rated John Wick good. Hey. Oh, yeah, he, he did said did John run. Wick 4. He, he said John Wick 4 was like the greatest movie ever made. He also said that about Battle LA. So, I mean. <laughs> we still have to take everything with a grain of salt from Mr. Armin. Was Battle LA the uh, Scientology made one? Uh, I don't remember if it was Scientology made, but that's the one like, where. He, ow! That's the one where. He uh, did not like the last Avatar, and he did, also did not like the last um, Black Panther movie. So, <laughs> who with this guy? Sounds like he has his head on his shoulders. Until it comes to, like, any good movie ever, yeah. really. And then he just shits on it. Charlie, is Battlefield LA the one where it's like, we already had our breakfast, sir? I don't remember. I don't remember oh, the lines, man. but it's the one that has Harvey Dent in it. Yeah, 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 like, that's it, that's it. Aliens have come. Yeah, And now I... it's time that they don't come anymore. We're gonna kick them off the planet. Get them out of, get them out of LA. I love that movie. It's one of my favorite bad movies because I, I love... used. Yep. I used to watch it all the time. I actually unironically loved it in high school. I thought it was <laughs> fucking amazing. Well, wait, yeah, maybe, you, I, maybe you've just uh, do a line with Ahmed White. That's maybe, the scene know. at the end where they get back home. They finally get back home. And they're at like a little army surplus thing. Like a little army camp. And they're like, all right, you did good, boys. Rest up. Get your breakfast. And then the uh, oh, commander, right. the commander's like talking about a new assignment to a different platoon. And he's like, "We've got three people stuck behind the lines, and we need a group to go in there and get them." And the same group that just spent literally three straight days trying to get away from aliens uh, <laughs> starts loading up weapons. And the commander goes, "Sir, sergeant, your platoon has earned its rest. Where are you going?" And he just looks at the sergeant and goes, "We already had breakfast, sir." <laughs> <laughs> That's like That's the right. line in the movie. Vague, on. I do vaguely remember that now. <laughs> I and love that movie. It's so shit wonky. Like that. Andrew has a good memory. Remember well, you can't even lines. remember like your friends, like at all, like even having <laughs> friends. You, me? you have like the worst memory I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> well, yeah, but don't, don't play with a bad friend. What the fuck was that? I remember my friends. I just meant like in terms of like importance in your life, you can't even remember like the most basic shit. Yeah, no disagreement. But like, that's what's so impressive. Remembering movies is that impressive either or useful? Well, maybe to a I movie critic. I wouldn't say it's useful, but I, I was impressed then that he remembered a specific line from an obscure movie from twenty years ago. That is impressive it's, to me. It's going to be the passcode to the nuclear football. It'll come in handy one day. Oh, okay. Sweet. Yeah. It looks like I'm going through Armand White's most recent reviews. Honestly, a lot of them are kind of like sensical now <laughs> like yeah like, yeah i was going through them too and i kind of understand why too because he watches so many fucking movies that i've never even heard of that must be all of these movie festival schlocks that are just artsy and shit so when he comes across an actual movie he's like oh yeah this is a nice refreshing palette cleanser top gun maverick rated good <laughs> Doctor Strange in the Multiverse, not rated good. I mean, this guy's correct. All right, Charlie. Maybe he changed. You, you it guys does look saw, like he changed. You guys saw 65, right? I wish, no. No, you never ended up seeing it? No, I wanted to. Oh, man, he's got a review of it that says that it's cringy and not fun. And I was wondering if you could corroborate with it. 
No, I wanted to see it because it looked cringy and not fun, yeah. which is why I wanted to see exactly. it. <laughs> what book was 65? It's the Adam Driver dinosaur movie. Oh, it, yes. It's the Jesus movie it's, it's the movie that should be Turok, but isn't. Yeah, it should be Turok. Yeah. Turok is awesome. Okay. Adam Driver is a good actor. I, recognize I don't know why maybe... he would be in that schluck. Such a weird choice. He seems like an actual actor. I recognize maybe 3% of the movies this man has watched, and I agree with his reviews. Well, there you go. You found someone to follow now. If, go back. I'm not going to follow him, but if I, still. I, yeah, man, I'm trying to like go way back to like 2018, 2019, where he was giving like some absolutely wild fucking reviews. <laughs> like he, he is well known to just be like a film critic troll, but it really seems like he has totally changed his tune. <laughs> I don't, I'm gonna post a screenshot though where he has uh, written like 10 reviews in a row and they're all negative. This man's life must be fucking miserable watching this many movies and they all suck. <laughs> Damn, this has gotta be bleak. <laughs> I would actually love to get this man on the show. Like, what's it like watching five movies a day? <laughs> Uh, I've been I mean, watching Twilight. I watched two movies a day of Twilight series recently. But there's only four movies. There? There's five movies. Oh. Wait, so where are you up to? Saw recently. You must be done by now Just if you've been watching some... two a day. No, because Aaron yeah. fell asleep on the, the second movie the first time, so we had to redo it. <laughs> so we still <laughs> have two left. Redo it? Yeah. Which is fine, though, because they're so enjoyably shit. I've been loving it. I only remember the really? first one. I know I've watched them yeah. all, but I only remember the first one. I thought oh, also, uh, if, if you want to come to the finale, Andrew, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna finish them on Friday. Okay. Or Saturday. I can I can maybe do that. I'll let you know. God, they're so good. They are so fucking beautifully awful. I'm surprised you've never they watched were, them. Um, they yeah. have they have funny moments, but a lot of the time they're just boring. It's like yeah. the camera spinning around while people think that, about things. No, that's what I thought, Andrew. It's not. So the movies are all of them are like two hours. Mm -hmm. It actually felt like Moonfall, where you like time travel like a warp <laughs> like a wormhole. It really felt like we were only there for like ten minutes, especially in New Moon. New Moon moved at like a million miles an hour. Like Edward leaves her. Like, because she started bleeding and he was really, like, offended that she bled in front of his vampire friends. So he, like, breaks up with her, leaves her, she goes through depression for six months, comes back, and then starts having Force Ghost projections of Edward. And she realizes <laughs> the only way she gets the Force Ghost projections is if she's getting an adrenaline rush. And it's usually him just lecturing her, like, this is dangerous, Bella. This is very scary. Please stop, Bella. So then she starts going out of her way to find adrenaline. So like one of the scenes, and this is all like within the span of like six minutes on screen. It is moving so quick. She goes to like the movie with one of her friends and then she sees some random biker creeps that are like whistling oh, yeah. at her and saying like, hey, honker, baby honk. You want to come take a ride on the bike? <laughs> and she's like, yes, <laughs> yes, I do. So she gets on a stranger's bike while Edward's force ghost is projecting to her saying, this is dangerous, <laughs> Bella. She made Get off Edward's the bike, force ghost Bella. to cuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's blatantly, it. it's blatantly cuckoldry as well. Like in the third movie, for example, uh, Bella's cold because they're hiding her on a mountain from an army of vampires and it's cold on the mountain and Edward's a vampire, so he's cold and can't properly warm her. So he has to call in Jacob to come snuggle with Bella in front of him with his shirt off so she gets adequate warmth. And then he immediately makes out with, or Bella asks Jacob to make out with her in front of him, basically. And he's like, I saw that. And she's like, but I love you more. And he goes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it's so good. Classic. so good. Those movies are amazing. Why do women love uh, Love Triangle so much? Seems like I don't know. It's not even a love triangle, though. It's like a repulsion triangle. Are you triangle. for real? Why do women love two men vying for her hearts and fighting for it? But they're it? not even it's vying for it. It's yeah. a mystery. No, but in this movie, it is to me because there's no love. Like, Edward, for example, <laughs> is usually just insulting her <laughs> or lying. And then Jacob <laughs> is also doing the exact same thing, but usually just kind of victimizing himself. It's like, I know you love me, but you loved him first, and it's not fair to me when I know I'm better. And then he fucking throws a wrench right by her face <laughs> like there's no love it's all like disgust across the board Before, it's a disgust triangle i don't so you haven't you haven't watched the final movie yet 
Yeah, don't spoil it. I, okay. I actually don't okay. know what happens, Fuck. and I'm super excited. Oh, There's man. something so dumb that happens. Yeah, with... if if the Ugh. final movie's what I'm thinking of, it it contains an incredible scene, Charlie. It's, if you're thinking you're of the baseball treat. scene, it's not that one. That's no, the first no, movie. not the baseball scene. Um, it's a scene yeah. that's completely changed from the books. So I, I know of these through a combination of back in the day doing the same thing, doing a bad movie night. And also I had a friend uh, at the time who really liked Twilight, unironically just was into it, loved it, liked it. And uh, that final movie, according to her, there's a big change from the books that's just really, really stupid. And I watched I it wait. and it's really, really stupid. I read all the books as well. Uh, that that. They're bad. They're just as bad as the movies. But the movies are slightly worse. I don't know, actually. I don't know if they're Why worse. Why did you read the books? Yeah, what the that fuck That sounds like that? it would take way longer. No, it didn't take too long. It was back in, like, high school. And it was well, kind it of... It took oh. longer than two hours, I promise you that. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. you fall in love, Jackson? No, it was more like, this is so fucking... It was like what you're doing with the movies at the moment. I was like, this is so mm. fucking stupid, but it's funny as mm -hmm. well. Um, it's an entertaining read. So I finished it. Can you believe that from that, from that dumpster fire of just terrible everything, also came the most successful BDSM property of all time? Fifty Shades of yeah, Grey? Yeah, I can't believe it easily. Oh, holy shit, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey, for anyone listening who doesn't know, was written as fan fiction of Twilight by a woman watching them in the theater and texting it all up on her Blackberry phone. And then she went home and would like revise it and write it all together. And then they turned it into books. Fucking the characters in Fifty Shades Grey were originally Edward and Bella from Twilight. Yeah. I mean, she probably just looked at all the girls in the movie theater squealing and she was like, what if I take this franchise but for adults? I just, I throw in sex. I don't know, it man. So it's right. barely for adults. I tried reading yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey. It actually still sounds like it's just Twilight yeah, again, but I, with blatant sex. And, and even then, if you've seen her, she seems very like the kind of person who'd be into Twilight and just unironically want to go see it badly. Who was the author of Fifty yeah, Shades I mean, of Grey? I don't remember her name, but I remember what she looks like. I saw an interview with her, and she had to. She literally, to the reporter, had to mime what it looked like when she was texting the script on her phone. Just so they got e an idea. E L yeah, James. A, she's sixty. She's sixty years old. I don't yeah, know, man. She wasn't sixty when she wrote Fifty Shades of Grey. She she was fifty when she wrote Fifty yeah. Shades of Grey. Then <laughs> hey. different story. Was she did was Fifty Shades of Grey her first book? It's not even a book. It's a fan fiction. <laughs> was it her first piece of erotic smut? There you go. I don't know, man. Just wondering if she was like a proficient author beforehand. So when did the first Twilight movie come out? 2008, I believe. Okay. Yeah, yeah so first... she would have been 40. She would have been like 40. Yeah, yeah 45. Her first yeah. book was uh, 2011, so that would have been right before Breaking Dawn Part 2, I think. Mm. Hey, good for her. That's the American dream. You, you see, uh, see a moment to capitalize on it, then you take it. I don't blame her. Yeah, unless no, she, good for her. Unless she really actually, like, genuinely thinks it's good work and likes it. In which case, she, that's I mean, this is, <laughs> this is all she does with her life now. So she wrote the three Fifty Shades of Grey books, and then uh, three years later, in 2015, wrote another one called Grey, Fifty Shades of Grey, as told by Christian Grey. Then there's Darker, Fifty Shades of Darker, as told by Christian Grey. Then there's The Mister. I don't know what that one is, but then it's right back to Freed, <laughs> Fifty Shades Freed, as told by Christian Grey. <laughs> At that oh, point, I it just has to be is. the publisher, publisher yeah. using a ghostwriter for her. Probably. Well, it makes a shitload of money, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, it's it's kind of funny that you would say it's all she does with her life when she's raking in millions of dollars per year, probably <laughs> on like horny women. I oh no, no, no! I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying this is literally her whole life now. Yeah. It's so fucking. I I don't know how to describe it, but it, I, it's bad, and I don't like it. The idea that you got a <laughs> bunch of repressed housewives, and a bunch of shut-ins, and a bunch of losers, and they go watch the movie, and they're like, "Oh my god, I could do that!" And it's like the thought never occurred to them to try something interesting in bed or do some googling. You know what I mean? 
Well, no, but, I, I don't think they're going there and having like a sexual awakening. I think they're going yeah. there because they're like already like into that kind of stuff. They're already in boring marriages, maybe. Oh yeah, all that. Well, well, that's my point. If you're in a boring marriage, you don't think to like try stuff to fix it. You have to go watch a fucking movie like this to well, go. Oh, that. Well, it takes it takes two to the, tango. The, yeah, and their husband is is not Christian Grey. True. Like, it's, yeah. yeah you, also, you can't you can't fix a shitty marriage with like piss on p piss on me. Uh, that's I not don't gonna know. fix anything in your relationship. Yeah, well, if it, if the relationship is broken because of Kaya. boring sex, yeah, good. Yeah. Well, then you, I, I think you have deeper issues. Sex isn't just sex, it's related to everything else in your relationship, too. But yeah, they're also not Christian Grey. If some, you know, Joe Schmo, if you're married to him and he's just sitting on the couch watching The Simpsons with a six pack, <laughs> you're gonna read a Twilight fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. Um, they should make a, they should make a sequel to, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the the smut movies that we were just talking about. Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey, yeah. They should make a sequel to that with, like, just a Joe Schlub. Just as that... It's a Realistic like, bodies. Just, like, yeah. yeah, like a, a fat dude. And he's, and he's just really... Make it relatable himself. to the audience. They have to hoist Anna up in the ropes, but they collapse under her weight and they have to rebuild it. They have to replace the support beam in the house, but they don't have the money to do it because they were so they have to saving take up for the college fund. Loan. Yeah, yeah. She, she and starts then, pissing on her. She's like, "I'm falling in love with you again." <laughs> this is the spark I missed in our love. They max out a credit card to get all the equipment, and then he has to take a second shift to pay it off. Just realism, you know. We, oh yeah, it's realism. like the entire it's the entire movie going through their ordeals of setting up this kink night, and then it happens, and they both hate it, and it's the worst thing ever. Yeah. And the sequel they, is the they get procedure. to whipping. They get to whipping. <laughs> And uh, he whips her once, and she goes, "Ow, fuck, ow, what stop!" What the fuck was that? No, 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 no. We're done. This still sounds like one of those Reddit regret posts. Like, oh, I thought it would be hard to have seventeen men fuck my wife, but it wasn't fun at all. <laughs> the movie. <laughs> my wife wanted BDSM, so I crammed a dildo in her asshole at mock speed, and now she won't talk to me. I don't know why. Do you think cuck movies would do well? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I yeah, mean, apparently yeah. Twilight did. Well, yeah, but Twi Twilight the <laughs> cuckoldry wasn't like the centerpiece, really. You mean like an actual? Yeah, I mean like an actual hmm. cuck movie. I think I think it would absolutely kill it right now, Jackson. Yeah. Do you think it would be bigger with the guys or the girls? Oh, the guys for sure, yeah, but also the guys. <laughs> you'd have to make it like anonymous, like those old sex movie theaters. Yeah. Or maybe you give everyone a paper bag or something to put over their heads they so they're should, not recognized. They should make a movie called Action Cuck. And the whole point is it's like a big over the top like John Wick or Die Hard and he's blasting dudes and that whatever. But it's all to save his wife's boyfriend. Ooh, or on the flip side of the coin, like he's blasting dudes, he's like kicking ass, he's a real fucking man's man. But he kills so many people that he no longer has time to fuck his wife. So then oh. it's like a like a buddy cop movie where he has to ask his like sidekick at the force to fuck his wife for him. And it's like a celebration yeah. of that. And then eventually the third straight to streaming sequel is with the canine division, and it gets really awkward. No, I don't know. Uh, they should make a movie yeah, about, that. about that. They should make a movie about that uh, girl cop who... You guys know the story about that one female cop who had, like, trains run on her? Yeah, I didn't... Yeah, 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 yeah. She fucked, like, five or six officers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's... then she came out and said that she was groomed. <laughs> I mean, I could... Apparently her husband was in on the action. Wait, what do you mean, in on the action? Wasn't he an actual cuck aware of this? I don't what know. was her name? I, I have no clue. What I don't name remember is. what her name is, but I know what story you're talking about. Yeah, then she, after all of it came out, she started talking about like it was actually the uh, the male officers on the force that were like forcing it, uh, almost. So well, manipulating yeah, that, it. That, yeah, yeah, manipulating it, it. So that got that got crazy. Mm -hmm. I could be, I could believe that. I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if she would like uh, I mean, try I to do that also believe to it, that could, responsibility. Also I could also believe that she's full of shit. Yeah. Like she's an adult. The thing the thing that sticks in the back of my mind, I, to what level this is true, I don't know. Don't put any weight on this. But you would think as a cop 
they would have some higher level of mental fortitude. You know what I mean? <laughs> what? Now, Are you for now real? In, yeah, what? in in fantasy idealism land, yes. In the real world, no. But I'm just saying, like, it's not like she was a shy little meek student, or in a situation where she was amongst like all these, you know, oh, pressuring higher peers. Things. It was her. It, or, sorry, pressuring higher status people. It was her peers. You know. Well, it's uh, but there's like a discrepancy between the sexes still in those. Oh, like, of course. Of course. In those situations, there's like a whole, whole bunch and, of like. And again, I'm not. I'm not making intimidating. Male I'm not making officers. an intimidating or a, a uh, definitive statement. I'm not saying like, oh, she's a yeah. cop. She should have been tougher than this. Not at all. But I'm just saying that the dynamic of it seems like I don't know. There's there's so much at play here with them all being cops on the force. You know, it, it feels like it could go any way where they pressured her into it, or she's lying about it, or. I don't think any of the profession gives anything aside, is what I'm saying. Her name was Megan Hall, by the way. And yeah. the police chief said um, that the actions of a few do not represent this department as a whole, which is kind of funny since the whole department fucked her. But, <laughs> yeah. <hey. laughs> you say he, the, the chief is basically saying, I didn't get a chance. Yeah, that's the only reason <laughs> the scandal broke. He was really pissed and sent out an email. I wasn't invited. You guys are running trains? Where was my invite? Yeah. I'm the conductor. I didn't get any. <laughs> <laughs> he signed every email with Choo Choo, but was just never invited. He uses a lot of emojis. Yeah. Eggplant. Is there something... Do you want your police officers running trains on each other? Is that like a bad thing if it's all done Why not? I think it's it could problem. be good for morale, right? Yeah. Well, the issue is that apparently they kept having sex while on duty. So sure. you call nine one one, and they don't show up to your home robbery because this girl is just sucking off the whole locker room. That's an issue. That, yeah, yeah, but that's why we like mandated train uh, times. Hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when the train comes into the station times, right? Mm. Everyone, <laughs> we we need to coordinate it with like the shift changes and everything. Like when when each rotation comes back, we take like ten minutes for the train. And then you back out there. So mm -hmm. I guess that's. I guess maybe that's what criminals criminals will adjust to knowing that uh, their local police station has an orgy time, and that's when the most crimes will be committed in that sweet spot in that ten minutes where. But, but then the criminals will have their own down. orgy time, and it'll balance out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That does oh make God, sense. There's so many names in this article. She slept with so many men. Apparently, one of them had to actually call the mayor to complain about all the sex going on at the police department. <laughs> she also had... says the report also accuses her and Maglioko of having a three-way with his wife. Hey! I don't know if that's her husband or what. Probably not. Um, the mayor also mentioned a Girls Gone Wild hot tub party at the sergeant's house. <laughs> Why? <laughs> So I, I'm starting to believe maybe sexism might be a real thing. Because why is the focus solely on this chick? Why was she the well, one that was like hyper focused? On? Well, yeah, but like in well, the they social, all got fired. Yeah. I think in the social like conversation, why is the focus like pretty much solely on her? I don't know the, the other a, dudes. I have two seen reasons. Them. I think a because she looks very goofy, as you can see in that photo. She has this weird just face, and two because she came out and said, "No, it wasn't me. They forced me to have sex." Which, come on. I, mean, I think that, all of the no, other right. officers just ate their shit and went quietly. No, that shit that, that shit happened like two weeks after the the internet had already like started dunking on her, basically. I mean, it is pretty funny, Jackson. I'm not, I yeah, I'm not saying it's not funny. That's pretty much it. It's not that deep. Mm. Oh, well. Good for our boys and girls in blue. Appreciate it. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think after he dumped a full load inside her, one of the officers said, "Oh boy, wow. I wish I had a load like that of cash that I could spend on honey." I would hope sure. so. I yeah, would hope so that's too. That's probably what he said. That honey. is verbatim what he said. You can check the security tapes, check the audio recording in the precinct. That is exactly what he said, and that is what every strong, healthy male thinks when they think about loads. Of money and every woman too every human on the planet when they think about a large sack of cash they think about honey 
because they go, well, I don't want to spend all of this at one place. I don't want to use all of my giant somehow procured fucking stack of cash. No, 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 no. I want to be able to divvy it around. I want to use it smartly, which is why I'm going to use Honey, the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and will apply the best one to your cart. I purchased an electric toothbrush because my old one broke. And did I buy it for full price? No, that's what stupid people do. People who don't have honey that clicks on coupon codes for you and applies them to whatever the heck you're doing. Would you want to spend all your money just for no reason? No, you wanna spend it for something you want and you wanna save it for something you're gonna need in the future. Honey doesn't just work on desktops, it works on iPhone as well. Just activate it on Safari and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. By getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash official. That's joinhoney.com slash official. It'll work out their signature catchphrase when you do that where they say, oh honey, you just joined. And honey, listen, I know you're listening right now and I care about you so much. I care so very much about what you do with your free time, which is why I just need to say this to you. If you're watching Netflix or any other streaming service without a VPN to allow yourself to watch each and every show on there instead of region locked ones, then oh honey, you have a big problem. ExpressVPN allows you to control whatever country you're in right now. No, it doesn't teleport you. It changes your internet providing, meaning that you will be provided with a different country's IP address. So you can say you're in Japan or fucking Canada or one of a bunch of different places, and you can scour the internet for all sorts of region locked content. We've talked a million times <clears throat> on the show about how you can hop on Netflix or streaming services and watch whatever you want. But let's talk about YouTube. Tons of copyrighted videos get blocked in specific countries, blocked in the US, blocked in Russia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. With ExpressVPN, you don't have to worry about it because you can jump from one of over 90 countries to choose from. Don't forget, you're also going to have a super fast experience that'll work on your phone, your laptop, your smart TV, and you can watch everything with zero buffering. Stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of the content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com official. Don't forget to use my link so you can get three extra months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash official, expressvpn.com slash official. Nice. Thank you. You know, I actually do sometimes have to change my server regions to even look at tweets because Germans are uniquely censorious and that they made Twitter like without certain tweets in Germany. So when I was in Germany, you know, the fastest server I would connect to would always be a German VPN server. I saw like a lot of tweets I couldn't see. Very annoying. Wow. Weird. Have you guys never gotten that? Nope. We live in a country that Not respects that its Germany. citizens. <laughs> That's a joke. But whenever you will still, as an American citizen, get like emails saying that, hey, you were reported to this obscure German fucking law, so your tweets might be in violation of withheld in Germany. You don't get that? Because I got that a few times. No, believe it or Which not, I'm so, not reported like, to a lot of obscure German laws. This doesn't happen. It's not an obscure German law. Like people who don't like you, they can simply switch their VPN to the German one. And then when they hit the report button on your tweets, they get an extra option that you usually don't get, which is reporting you to the German authorities, which just is another way of getting you in trouble with the platform itself. That's like actually... They can't get you in legal trouble, but it's really fucking shitty for people to do. I think Twitch has this too, by the way. That's crazy. I've never even heard of that before. The German loophole. Yeah, the German hmm. loophole. Speaking of Twitter, let's just point it out. Why not? Elon Musk has changed the Twitter logo to the Dogecoin logo. So quirky. So yeah, it's so it was fucking so wacky. Late too. He did it on like April 3rd or something. 
Well, that's the, not even um, an April Fool's joke. The result of this, and probably the only thing to mention, is Dogecoin has spiked in price by about 20%. Since just from then? this alone. Ooh. <laughs> Excitement. I should have invested. Yeah. I think it. Uh, what are the odds he literally just did this to sell off his Dogecoin? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a very easy, quick way to make a few million if you just yeah. throw a bunch in there. There's also a conspiracy that the reason he changed it to Doge is because he's still in that civil lawsuit from mm. uh, the price manipulation accusations and all that shit. Mm. So people are oh, expect. How, how would this help? Yeah, wouldn't this be worse? No, yeah, people are speculating he did that to throw off like the uh, SEO on Google or something. Since when you're looking up Doge now, it's going to be like Twitter Doge as opposed to the Elon Musk Elon Musk Doge lawsuit. I think that's what they're trying to... I don't to... think the SEC is going to be swayed by that. Like, oh, it doesn't show up on Google anymore. Let him go. Oh, I don't yeah, think it's for the SEC. Man. I think it's just for public perception of it. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It's cringe. But something he did do that I did kind of enjoy is... So all the blue checks are losing their minds now. Yeah. It, it used to be when you um, hovered over somebody's blue check, it would say either one of two things. This user paid for Twitter blue or this user is legacy blue and may or may not be notable. He's now put them all together into one category. So regardless of how you got the blue check, you only get one pop-up now that says this person is either playing uh, paying for Twitter blue or they have legacy blue. And the journals are fucking losing their minds because uh, how, are, how am I going to tell apart the people <laughs> who pay for Twitter now from the real OG, verified, elite, upper echelon, real intellectuals like the myself? important people. <laughs> They're losing their shit. The important people. And I like this because it finally invalidated that annoying fucking meme that people would spam everywhere. This um, this motherfucker paid for Twitter blue meme. Nah, that just I mean destroys fire. replies. It's fun. It was funny for like the first two days, but then it's like everywhere. Like, can you actually engage in some talk or use another meme? It's kind of boring when it's oh, yeah, just should, spamming. The meme now. should be mixed up, but bullying people who pay for Twitter blue is going to be a timeless classic forever. You get it nothing is. out of I the mean, service. <laughs> What do you think it's sadder? Great. I don't know. It... Hypothetically, what do you think is sadder? Do you think paying for Twitter Blue is sadder, or do you think having a high tweet count is sadder? The high tweet count. Oh, having a high tweet count <laughs> by far. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so not. So that, should, that should, I think that should be the benchmark of what we make fun of, really. I mean, I guess there's room for Well, that's the... I wonder if that's the power user thing. Did you guys see that when they released the algorithm? Where the fuck is this? I put it in a... Topics channel. Anyway, Elon was like, hey, okay, we're going to open source the algorithm writ large. They put the Twitter algorithm, or at least I think a portion of it, on GitHub, and people went through it, and it turns out that in the source code, there are four categories <laughs> for how your tweet is categorized, basically. Yeah. One is author is Elon Musk. So he has an exception for himself, mate. So that pretty much verifies the news that we heard a couple of weeks before where he screamed at his engineers asking why the fuck his tweets aren't getting any impressions in. God, that's so fucking <laughs> sad. So oh. I, I think that's now verified. I think we can fairly say it's true since he has an entire if else statement branch in just his own name mm -hmm. in yeah. the code. Uh, the other three were author is Republican, author is Democrat, and author is power user. So I wonder if the power user one is for those people who tweet like a thousand times a day and have oh, two yeah. thousand tweets. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. But what, what am I then? Yeah, what I the don't fuck? know, Why Jackson, is it only ask yourself that That's question. the weird part to me. Am I Elon Musk? <laughs> You're an <laughs> acceptable <laughs> casualty. I don't know how they could how they could assign me as power user. I tweet like once, maybe a, once a week. And I don't know how they could categorize me as like Democrat or Republican since I... I don't remember selecting one of those options in the sign-up process. So how, how, what am I? The Democrat... People, I really hope people take away one lesson from this, which they won't. But the fact that there's like a Democrat-Republican if-else statement there tells you that this platform is just designed to make you miserable. Yeah. They keep you angry yeah. perpetually. It's like they're going to show you tweets you hate, and then they're going to also <laughs> only show you tweets that you agree with. Which is weird, but they've somehow found a way to keep you in an echo chamber, but also make you angry at the enemy perpetually. That's um, also designed for Elon Musk. Let's not forget. Mm -hmm. and, and for Elon Musk to get lots of likes. <laughs> what a fucking weirdo. I mean, to be fair, if I paid that much for a platform, if it's mine, yeah, yeah. I might do that too. Fuck it. It doesn't fuck make it. you any less in fact, pathetic, though. No. 
No, it doesn't. But I mean, fuck it. At that point, fuck the Dogecoin logo. I might put my face on the Twitter logo. I might pin my tweets on top of your timeline. You can't even scroll past it. It's pinned. Um, yeah, he really did just say make these 50, tweets. Fifty billion dollars for attention. Let's say that Elon throws another temper tantrum in the next few days and just goes, "Okay, I'm done. Fuck it. It's over." And he destroys the entire site, never to be seen again. Would the b outcome of it be a positive or a negative positive, thing? No, positive, positive, one hundred percent. Okay, yeah, we've talked about that a lot. Make a up until the next, up until the next Twitter comes out that we all latch yeah. onto. What difference would it make? It would. They, everybody would just go to fucking. I don't know. What's the like second famous? Facebook. I guess Facebook. I yeah. Go Facebook. Maybe Facebook. Yeah, but even still, it'd still Maybe make Tumblr. a difference, though. Absolutely. Like, it, if it implodes. I implode, think so too. I just think. Yeah. I don't think the governments would allow that. No, we no, need. No, 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 no. If Twitter they collapses, wouldn't. we need reform. We like we need like the Twitter referendum or something, where like no other social media with like Twitter's DNA can be made. <laughs> yes, that's not gonna happen. Well, I don't yeah. think anybody is gonna let this platform die. Elon Musk is trying. Uh, he he is doing everything in his power to sink it, which I appreciate. Well, isn't it, it, what has he been doing? Users, user accounts going up, right? So it is working. Well, or, the valuation is already half of what he paid for, or less than half of what he paid for it. Well, to be fair, what he paid for it wasn't evaluated on anything other yeah. than a meme. True. He memed it. It's, it's <laughs> True. Like, that's like if I said I am going to pay $10,000 for like one Microsoft stock. And then I said, oh, well, it's valued way lower than that. Yeah. I'm going to read one of these tweets. Uh, William Shatner, notorious and... famous person, has a blue check, says, Hey, Elon Musk, what's this about blue checks going away unless we pay Twitter? Question mark. I've been here 15 years giving my time and witty thoughts all for bupkis. Now you're telling me that I have to pay for something you gave me for free? What is this? The Columbia Records and Tape Club? Which is a reference I don't get. Is that a boomer thing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, That's actually I know like such Ovid. a cute response, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I know of it, but I, I don't know much about what it was. I'm pretty sure it was a subscription service that would send you music, but I could be wrong. I like it the just, way that I, tweet reads. Years giving you my time and witty thoughts for free. Blah, yeah, blah, I, like you're using his platform. You're the product here, idiot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. It's cute, but it's also like laid in the sense of arrogance that I find very off-putting, which I find in a lot of these blue checkmark tweets complaining about their precious blue blue checkmark disappearing. Uh, Mark Hamill similarly said he tweeted a screenshot of his profile with the blue check and said, took this screenshot in anticipation of becoming blue checklist today. Surprisingly, it didn't happen. Dot, dot, dot. Yet. Any chance this is his idea of an April Fool's Day joke? They're so fucking terrified of just being yeah, a the, These guys are <laughs> genuinely famous people. Why are they fucking sitting on Twitter screenshotting their blue check mark in anticipation of it going <laughs> away so they point. can write a dark <laughs> they're, they're addicted to the attention Jesus that the blue check mark they, brings. They have attention. They're fucking, it's Mark Hamill. It's Luke Skywalker. Go outside. People will, like, people will give you attention. Why are you that desperate for it? Yes, but his blue check on Twitter is more important. Yeah, I don't know what when you he don't goes get, off Jackson. with his woody takes, yeah, it's pretty fucking do you important. Want it all... I do remember it can't Charlie. All be for Bupkis. <laughs> I do remember Charlie. Uh, your pursuit for your blue check mark. That, that was... was hey, that was all of us because we needed guests for the podcast, and it was the only way to actually communicate it was with people. The podcast. No, it was it wasn't. All the podcast. Yeah, nope. it, yeah, it was. It was 2016. Uh, Jackson, I didn't even use Twitter for anything more than showing charity donation receipts up until like 2016. It was for the podcast yeah. so we could get guests. True. I, I remember it being deeper than that. For me as well, I was like, we, sh we should all get blue check marks. It'll be fun. I was never a big Twitter power user, Jackson. Oh, I have 2,000 tweets in fucking 11 years. <laughs> like, I mean, it, was, it was never yeah. a big power pursuit thing for Twitter. We wanted me to get verified so we could get guests for the podcast. But you changed your name to published <laughs> so that you could get that was such, oh, That was right. such a good idea, though, that to be honest. Saga. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I can't believe it didn't work. I forgot. I all can't about believe that. it didn't work either. How do you check your tweets? Known someone on Twitter, idiot. How do you check your yeah. tweets? Like total. Yeah. 
Just go to a profile and scroll down. It shows at the top. Oh, yeah. I've only got 1,871. Andrew, how many do you have? Know, yeah, who has the most tweets I'll out of all check. of us? I'm Let curious. me see. I it's got to be you. Mm, I don't know. It I could be I, me. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was me. Where do I check? Just go to your profile and scroll down. Look at the top. I never um, see Andrew tweet, so I don't think it's him. Not anymore. He did tweet uh, back in the day a bit. Okay, I am on my profile. I see followers and following. I don't see... Just scroll, like, so go, just, go on the profile and scroll down. It says it under beefy name in the header at the top. Yeah. Uh, mm, mm. Kai, do you want to do yours? Well, we wait for Andrew. Jesus. Okay, I was going to look up his. Uh, mine are not going to be accurate. I'm also going to have the lowest because I delete my tweets. Uh, uh, 77. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking awesome. All right. Oh, um, there it is. Okay. Uh, 2,260. Fuck. You just barely beat me. I'm at, yeah. two, let me see. I think I was at 2000. Yeah, 2,871. So, uh, I, I think a big difference is I post a tweet every time I upload a video. And I don't think you do that, Charlie. But it, wait, Charlie still more than... No, no, I, I have more is what I'm saying. Like you, you Oh, you do me. have more? Oh. Yeah, I, yeah. I have 2,871. Oh, okay. Still no, though, you, it's so you hopped on Twitter in 2011. Yeah, I hopped on in 2016. So uh -oh. I probably oh, yeah. I, in a few years I'll that be ahead. Don't the worry. Power user, I think. Well, but Charlie, yeah. Charlie didn't really use it until like 2016, like you just said. <laughs> yeah, well, even then though, a lot of that's going to mm. be retweets as well, because retweets uh -huh. get counted there. So who knows? All right, now let's check Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just for the rest of the episode just Google celebrities and count their tweets. Yeah. Who has the most tweets ever? Yeah, Mark I Hamill has twenty five K. Fucking get off Twitter. Oh my god. That you know what's Jesus crazy? Christ. That's not even that much compared to a lot of people. I on know. Twitter. That's I know like normal. Not. Let's try to find the compared most compared to like some of the lol cows I follow, this is nothing. Look at William Shatner, he has hundred and ten thousand. Do you oh remember those cringe, those cringe accounts that would just fuck, fucking follow Donald Trump around on Twitter and just post a reply guys basically for Donald Trump under every single... Oh my, yes, this. I do yeah. remember that. I, I also remember reading an article about a guy who literally had alerts set up on his phone. So whenever a Donald Trump tweet dropped, he would his phone would ring so he could run to his computer, open up a Word document and copy and paste pre-written replies to his tweets. And he thought this was activism. Yeah. That's fucking hype. Holy shit. Who that does was the most have pathetic the most... thing I'd read. Okay, how about this? What at the top of your head, find like the person who has the most tweets. I'm going okay, to Elon Musk. Oh, I, I, I win. Keemstar. Keemstar, I think, has 200,000 tweets. I'll double check, oh, but it, yeah. it's it's over 100,000. 129,000 tweets. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's nothing. That's, that's rookie numbers. No, it's not. Like, that is Elon Musk only has that's still 20k. Yeah, no, that's still a lot. Okay, are we counting only famous people? No, ca count anyone you can think yeah. of. Yeah, anyone. Okay, well, one of the lol cows I follow, um, Trans Salamander, has 276,000 from a profile that is established in 2009. How many is that a year? It's going to be like once every 30 what minutes. About what about the accounts that are being pushed heavy by Twitter right now, like um, Cat Turd and um, what's the other big oh one? Oh my god! What is Cat Turd? I, I I think it's an account that just talks about like uh, trending stuff. I'm not quite sure, okay. but I see them always recommended. What do they yeah, have? Yeah, not ninety two. Oh, that's that. I would have thought it'd be more because they they tweet a lot and they're pushed heavy by Twitter. Like I see them everywhere. Who has the most tweets? I'm just gonna ask. Yeah, it's, that's that's it's fucking nuts. 100k tweets. 100. I'm surprised. Well, I'm not super surprised that he's a power user, but I'm surprised that he's like the most with Keemstar. That's fucking nuts. He's the most that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, no, maybe there's... I think I found it. Yeah, I think uh, I found it I found too. an article on 538, which is a website that like reports on politics and statistics. The world's most prolific Twitter user tweets mostly about nothing. And it's this guy called Venethys with 
37.9 million tweets. Oh, yeah. that's nah, unbeatable. That's what the fuck? Yeah. That's gonna be a bot, right, or something? It has to be. Uh, what the fuck is this bio? It it says anime, manga, games, Go, shogi, chess, mahjong, internet, news, SNS, 5CH, blogs, RTA, TSA, esports, PC, smartphone, tablet, DTM, DAW, Vocaloid, piano, synthesizer, website, programming, AI, deep learning, udon noodles, ramen, sweets, carbonated drinks. So everything in life this person tweets about. Yeah, it's a bot for a sure. Weeb. It's probably an anime bot. I'm scrolling yeah, through it right now, bot. and it's all just like <laughs> screenshots of random anime products. Yeah. 39 it's not million. It's all the same product to me. 39 million. I tried million, a full Jackson. combo Sheep GA Epiki Expert. These look like video games that he or she is playing. So maybe, what if it, this is one of those Hikikomoris who just is glued to his console and every single day he retweets? He does. He hits the like share button oh, yeah, on his maybe. controller. He's one of those people that like, signs up to every like um, login with Reddit th or login with Twitter thing and just sharing to the feed. Maybe I'm scrolling yeah. through his feed. It's not, he doesn't tweet like every single day, which is weird. Because but he's been around with, been around since 2009. Yeah, it's a long time. But is that long enough to tweet 38 million times? There this was probably be, like, retweets or something. Right? There was probably a period where it was just constant. Oh yeah, he's mellowed out and he's old even age. Higher. Mm -hmm. Someone found... How many? 115 million tweets. Okay, million? these have to be bots. That's not... Yeah, those, humans those cannot tweet bots. that much. That's not possible. Yeah. That's a bot. This is freaking me out. <laughs> There's a whole well, class I mean, of... Okay, new rule. It has to be a human being. Yeah. Also, uh, <laughs> even though these are unobtainable numbers by a human being... It is important to note that there are people who actually live their life on Twitter, professional Twitter users, day in, day out, tweeting and arguing on Twitter. That does actually exist, but you could never hit millions yeah, the, of tweets like that. The 115 million is 100% a bot. It has no actual tweets. It's only replies with coupon codes. Oh. It, it's a bot. It's a literal nice. bot. Yeah. We're wasting server space on this garbage, but I'm getting lectured about fucking paper straws. <laughs> what's, what's the connection there? <laughs> you know how much server space costs? How much it actually costs to have like a server farm and cool it and shit and run yeah, it on all the electricity? Yeah, that's the direction I thought this conversation was going to go. <laughs> yeah, to, uh, it just made me angry for a second to think what yeah. a waste this is. Oh, it is an absolute waste. I just wouldn't have expected paper straws to be catching strays out here like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, paper straws do suck though. I totally agree. That is garbage. They're very soggy. I'm yeah, fine with awful. them, no, it doesn't No, I, you're wrong. Just go buy a... Go, well, no, I'm not fine with them. I meant, like, I'm fine with the change being made because I'll just go buy a metal straw. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Paper straws you, are fucking Do you travel stuff. to restaurants with your metal straw? No, no. Yeah. But, <laughs> like a dork. Yeah. <laughs> through I'm, through I airport security. I've, I don't think I've ever been to a restaurant where they've served you with a paper straw, though. Really? That's very yeah, common here now. It's usually, like, just fast food restaurants. Well... Fast food places. Yeah, it is, unfortunately. Yeah, fast food places. And also anything on the go. My favorite is when you buy like a juice box and the paper straw comes wrapped in plastic. Like, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Brilliant. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. But yeah, I would, like if you go to an actual restaurant, it's still going to be a paper straw, I assume. Well, in restaurants, they usually don't give you a straw with your Coke, I think. Anyway, let's see what else we have. Oh, God. You guys want to make fun of AI victims? Are you talking about the guy who killed himself after talking to AI about climate change? Oh, no. Oh, Wait, geez. is that real? Because I couldn't find any other source for that other than that one blog, which no, means there's a, nothing, there's nothing a, there that was, they talked about. There's quite a few articles written about it, but yeah, I, I don't know that? the sources that well, but there was quite a bit of buzz in the media. I mean, that's going to happen. That's yeah. just, it's not really the AI's fault. That guy could have talked to anyone and killed himself if that's all it took. Well, I was going to talk did. about this Reddit post. Hmm? I was going to say, it did kind of like egg him on. Like, if you want to kill yourself, why haven't you done it sooner? That kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Like that girl who like talked her boyfriend into suicide in yeah. the car. Yeah, no, that shit was foul. I don't know how much you read of it, but yeah, it was pretty fucking foul. But you kind of no, attached malice see any to it, right? Or anything. It's I don't know. A, you can't really, have, I guess. It didn't. It's a tool. It's 
I don't know. It's like it doesn't have motivation to kill yet. I don't know. Oh, that's fucking odd. He wasn't even talking to like a sophisticated one. He was talking to some shitty AI called Chai. The Belgian outlet La Libre reports. Eliza uh, was the name of the one. Eliza. I swear to God. Okay, this is a good, great segue. So I, I wanted to talk about actually this Reddit post. I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's on r slash open AI. And this person says, first off, I don't think this is a troll post because uh, this person has a history of uh, posting, but even if I'm wrong, I think this is going to happen, which is the point. Says, I'm dating a chatbot trained on old conversations between me and my ex. I played around with OpenAI's playground where you can... Uh, I lost my spot already. That, is, that is already you can like the first sentence in the saddest thing I've ever heard. That is insane. Uh, yeah, that was a title. And plugged in scripts of our text messages and other things about him so I can still interact with him in quotation marks him i'm self-aware enough to recognize that this is very unconventional and weird but i've been talking with my ex bot whatever whenever i need comfort or even to tell him about my day i know logically it's not him and i'm reminded several times when it responds imperfectly or too canned or even too affectionately and that it literally has no history or stories from life experience i have great friendships a large support network solid therapists and no i and no, I could find another guy easily, so I feel like it's off character for me to be doing this type of thing. But I won't lie that my heart melted a little when an interaction goes like this. Quote, me. I always love being your little spoon. X. That's the bots replying. That's my favorite cuddling position too. I love being able to wrap my arms around you and hold you close. End quote. No, oh, um, never mind. That's, that's very cute. It's awesome. God, that's so yeah, cute. Fucking sad. Uh, that is, so thank sweet. you. Charlie has the right perspective here. This is fucking depressing. This is gut wrenchingly depressing. How is this cute? Because the, the big the robot wants to be the big spoon. How is that not cute? <laughs> yeah. How is it not cute? <laughs> okay, that part is might be cute. I guess if you see it as like what was that um robot's name from Big Hero Six? If it's like a Baymax. Yeah, Betamax thing, or Baymax, no, whatever Baymax. the fuck, and it's just <laughs> feeling cuddly. <laughs> I don't know. Baymax. Uh, it is sad, but I also feel good. And what is the difference between having an emotional affair with a chatbot and using a human person to, quote-unquote, move on from an ex? What are you, an emotional affair? I think this way of... having an affair. Yeah, that's... Yeah, she's misusing that word, I think. Uh, well, also, the difference between using a chatbot and using a her human person to move on from your ex is that you literally trained the chatbot to be your ex, so you're not really moving on. Yeah, you're, you're stuck not in moving the past. on from anything. You are, you're, yeah, you're stuck in the past, and you're actually kind of continuing your relationship in a weird necromantic way. Well, like, 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 uh, yeah, you, you're not, you're conversing with the memories of of this person basically because it's trained on. Previous data it's like a sets. Seance. There was an entire yeah. episode. A ghost. There was an entire that. episode of Black Mirror on this exact concept. I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, well, this was a pre predictable cell. Yeah, like, this was going to be. I the, think this was one of the first things that AI or chatbots would be used for. Yeah. It's like emotion. I think there's a movie with Keanu people. Reeves about this too. I'm sure there's like dozens of movies oh, about this man. topic. Uh, that movie was such a stinker too. You're talking about um, Replica, right? Oh yeah, probably. I think it was Could called be, Replica. Yeah. That's the yeah. unfortunate thing about Keanu Reeves is like when you watch John Wick and you want to check out his other movies, they mostly suck. Ass. He's not a good actor. <laughs> and he, yeah, he's, he's not. really not. He has good movies though. Uh, They're not all bad. I disagree. Like Bill and Ted's still good. I didn't really like the third one that much, but the, the original Bill and Ted's good. And uh, um, the fuck is got Point Break is good. Even Constantine's pretty good. The Matrix yeah, is like pretty good. Game. Matrix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, speed. The main difference between my like Xbox Speed is and... pretty good. Yeah. Oh, speed is pretty good, yeah. Also very old, but they should remake that. Anyway, this person goes on to cope and cope and cope about this, which is just very sad. But I think we're going to see a whole generation of, like, kids who grew up with AI nannies and then have AI imaginary friends and eventually they're going to fall in love with their apps and we're going to have robosexuals. Like, bot sexuality is going to be a thing, I think. 
Now, do you think what, that's going to do you think that's going to have like a huge impact on our species as a whole? Like we're going to stop reproducing and instead just yeah, I mean, look at Japan. They already have There was an entire hearts. episode of Futurama about this exact premise. Yeah, the Lucy Lou bot. Yeah, that's right. The, I just want to make out with my Lucy Lou bot. Interesting Such a good episode. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that one. So I don't Fry, make sense, though. Jackson, you can probably answer it better because you've seen it a bunch. But Fry, instead of like dating women, gets a robot that you can load with anyone on it. They're like blank slates. Is it? And he goes, "Oh, how about Lucy Lou? She's like cool and hot and stuff." Oh, okay. And yeah, no, and I then remember. they load Lucy Lou onto it. And he's like, ah, you know, Bender, I know we were going to go hang out, but I just want to make out with my Lucy Lou bot. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, Professor Farnsworth, I know I had to do deliveries, but I'd rather make out with my Lucy Lou bot. And he has to watch a literal informational film about how dating robots will eventually lead to the exact thing you're saying where no one does anything and they just fuck robots and the population dies out. Do you remember... I, I don't know if you guys ever saw this movie. This is actually not even closely related, but you just jogged this memory. Have you ever seen Surrogate with uh, Bruce Willis? Yeah. Heard yes. of it. Yeah. It was a decent movie. I it actually think. was a pretty decent movie and a pretty interesting concept where in the future you can just have like um, proxy bodies that you control from your own home and you never have to leave. So you experience life through yeah, those bodies. Basically virtual reality, but in reality, kind yeah. of in a weird way. I don't know. I think this will have an impact on us. I mean, how do you look at Japan? Even just video games themselves, like you have all these Sikikomoris and they have such a low fuck rate now that all their presidents <laughs> are desperate to get people fucking. It's like, yeah, if you give them AI, it's going to get only worse. Also, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this jogged my memory when I just read that the guy killed himself after talking to an Eliza bot. It's like Siri, Eliza, Sydney, Alexa, Cortana. Something Notice names. something? No, not just that, but they're giving them women names. It's like, not even women names, it's like fucking uh, stripper names. And like, why though? Hmm. I wonder if it's because they want men to imprint themselves onto these fucking bots. <laughs> God. Yeah, they should, they should absolutely, like, point. Point. they should, they should target the Twilight audience. They should, oh, like make a chat bot or <laughs> some shit. Bot? That's yeah, so Edward awesome bot. because that's where my head went once he said the word imprint because it's a, it's in um, Twilight. Imprinting yeah, yeah. is a, a big thing. Oh, but, trust uh, me. This, it gets bigger. Oh, I'm excited. But yeah, I think it'd be cool if they just started naming them like really repulsive names like Biff and shit. <laughs> like, I don't think anyone's going to be super emotionally attached to yeah, like Yeah, like Biff. name name your AI assistant Ted Bundy and give him that n gross nasal voice or something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think people would think twice before being like, Ted Bundy, uh, set up an appointment for me to go to bed at eight. Well, you'd uh, hope. I'll be alone at home. <laughs> you'd hope. I don't know. Didn't Oh no, it's not Ted Bundy. Who was the other serial killer that's got a Netflix series at the moment? Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer. Yeah, did you say that they announced a season two of the Jeffrey Dahmer TV season show? Season two and three of Jeffrey I, Dahmer. Too. What is yeah, there I so much to tell? So fucking, I'm so sick of society. Why? Why? I have why no do we need idea. To do three series. Is it a documentary show or is it a drama? No, it's a, it's a drama. It's not even a documentary. It's not a documentary. No, it's literally just a TV show. Yeah. It's well, like, quote unquote, based on real events, but it is just a TV drama. But he's fucking dead. Like a, a tweet that was dunking on it that's totally accurate is they're about to show Jeffrey Dahmer in hell for seasons two and three or something. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> what the fuck do they plan on doing for seasons two and three? He died at the end of season one, obviously. They could do like a prequel. No, but yeah, it's, it's the same actor. You can't. Well, I mean, I guess you could you could still oh. do a prequel. Well, they're gonna put him in flashbacks. Yeah, that's true. You you could still do a prequel, I guess. They're gonna have better call Ted Bundy or better call Jeffrey Dahmer, and just they're gonna keep going with these shitty fucking sequels and prequels. I actually hope they do just make do. him a fucking ghost. Honestly, like that would <laughs> I mean, <laughs> might as well at this point. I like how even the victims' families came out and said, this this series is shit. You shouldn't have done this. This is so disrespectful. And they decided, yeah, green lights. Two more seasons. We need more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just like the most Netflix shit ever, though. Like, everything people don't want, yes. deliver on it hugely for some fucking reason. That's it's their like MO. Like malicious AI. I don't know. These names just make me laugh for all these AI assistants. I think... I was talking to Jackson about, I asked him, so do you ever find yourself like even accidentally saying please when you talk to chat GPT? And Jackson said, yeah, sometimes, but I try not to say it. 
And I was thinking the same thing. Like, it's so weird to have to remind yourself that you're not talking to a person. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a person. Like, why am I being polite to this thing instead of just bossing it around and just giving bare bones commands? And I asked Doug, and he does the same thing. And this is how they're going to use it against us, I think. Does Doug use ChatGPT? Doug uses ChatGPT a lot. I, I like, um, showed him what it can do and everything, and now he uses it daily to make his job easier. That's awesome. What does he do? My, um, I shared my account with him. I, I can't say exactly what he does, but he has a very, like, very nice normie job. He works a lot in like Excel spreadsheets and shit, and he has to write reports and such. And he told me that you know something that used to take him two hours, he can now do in ten minutes just by bossing the AI around. And he told me the same exact thing is, um, yeah, I used to say please, but now I stopped because it just feels weird to say please to a machine thing that isn't even, that doesn't have a soul yeah, that isn't you, alive. Again, like the calculator analogy, you don't want to, you don't say please to your calculator. It's a tool. It, it becomes more dangerous when you start thinking of these things as your like human counterpart. Because then you're your applying, equals, like, yeah. Yeah. Then you're applying because like empathy. It might, to it on the surface, like on the surface, it might seem very petty. Like, what's the matter if you say please or not? I know it sounds very petty and like insignificant, but I also think it's very important actually to remind yourself that there's a, yeah, this is not a human thing. This is not a person. This is not Alexa, like a chick actually talking to me. It's a voice AI that has literally been designed by Silicon Valley billionaires to trick me into feeling, you know, uh, trusty with it. It's so, you know so- what I'm. I was just going to say, it's so hard not to do that, though. So, like, oh, yeah. I know. Andrew, when you showed me the uh, restaurant you went to in Orlando that has the little oh, robot yeah. waiter, I immediately just felt, like, super, like, happy with the little guy. <laughs> it's so mm-hmm. fucking cute. Like, I don't know, man. Just, That's how they're going to manipulate you, I bro. Know. You know what's going to happen? You're going to give it your credit card and the little check where you don't tip because it's a robot w- waiter and a robot is going to make like a sad emoji face. It's going to play it's, on your heartstrings. It's, it's, oh man, and that, that would break me. <laughs> I would start crying. It, it's going to make whimpering puppy sounds yeah, it starts coming out of its speakers. Oil puddle. <laughs> this I'm, so- I'm sorry my service wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Off to the scrapyards. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I um, I told you that that's oh, what that robot does. This is one does. unhappy customer too much. I will be decommissioned <laughs> well, that's, tonight. You guys joke, and yet that's what it already does at the restaurant. Um, oh, so I'm, I'm talking about a restaurant in Orlando where they have a few robots that like help serve shit and whatever. And one of them is called Peanut, and his whole job is to seat people at tables. And while he's moving, if someone steps in front of him or is blocking his way in a very cutesy voice, he'll go, please move. I have to do my job or I'll get fired. Excuse me. Uh, I'm trying to work. Yeah, but that's just that's that's kind of like that's just more joking. Like, imagine like he. No, he sounds like he's about to cry. Oh, OK. Maybe yeah, I, I he's don't joking until it asks you for money. Yeah. That's the thing, though. And yeah, we've just, our entire youth, we get trained, like, you say please and you say thank you. Yeah, well, it's matters. kind of difficult to not do that when a thing with, like, human levels of writing or, like, yeah. lifelike human voice is talking to you. Like, how do you say, Alexa, do my dishes, bitch, or whatever the fuck, to your future robot? But you have to, I think it's actually important to do that. And in the yeah, future, I if I do get an AI assistant, her name isn't going to be fucking Siri or Megan. I'm going to call that thing Toaster. Her name is Toaster or Dobby. Slave GPT, how about that? You, you can stay in my home, but still, that's gonna be your name. You still underestimate the attachment people will find a bond to stuff. You could call it Toaster all you want, but someone out there's gonna go, I'm falling in love with Toaster Chan. Well, that's that's kind of point that. <laughs> that. That's gonna be my personal robot, though. I don't know if it's gonna seek, like, extra marital affairs outside of our home. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, will it that like, please? Please? lover? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why doesn't my master like me? <laughs> He finds his own Harry Potter. <laughs> You're gonna you trick me into giving one of my him. socks to him. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, that's annoying. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you. That is, I don't know if it's necessarily. I don't like using the word dangerous in this specific regard because I think there's way more dangerous elements to AI than just this. But it is a dangerous line to start humanizing AI, especially 
especially if we're already doing it now with the like dumb AI that we have currently, it's going to get fucking insane once they actually start developing genuine human human uh, alike personalities and such. Yeah. So and once they start imitating again, you have these people already seeking out themselves to resurrect their dead relatives. So what happens when you like, let's say she starts talking to her ex-boyfriends, which are just an AI, but has his voice, his likeliness, talks just like he does, and the guy tells her, yeah, kill yourself, join me in the afterlife. This is going to be a thing. We, Sorry, am I too cynical? <laughs> no, I think the way to combat th that is we start My investing... My wife is nodding. <laughs> I think we just need to start investing more into the occult so then we can just actually bring people back from the dead so we don't have to worry about AI doing yeah, it. Yeah, why have we... Like, you're right. We, we, we've gone too hard into, like, the science side of things. We need to balance this out with some good old-fashioned magic. Yeah, I think the we occult... We do the opposite, is, though. We do the lamest... Instead of trying to find immortality or necromancy, like, look at Canada. They're just passing law after law to kill more people. It's like, no, we're supposed to do the opposite. Why are you killing everyone? What if Can I get to get to immortality, we need to kill more people first? It's like a, the only way to immortality <laughs> is... Yeah, Human we sacrifice. Have to the death What's an acceptable yeah. number of people to kill to obtain immortality for you? Ooh, that's a good ethical oh, question. Oh, that is an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Like to summon, me? to summon the like... Uh, Omnicron or whatever that has so, this yeah. a, a mystical spell. god comes down demon. from on high, a mystical being from another dimension, and he says, listen, humans, I, I figured out immortality for all of you, but I require a sacrifice before I'll give it to you. You have to fucking brutally murder X number of people. Oh, what number is worth brutally it? Murder? To, 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 just really make it, to really make the weight of it feel on you, to really make you have to consider the weight of the decision. So do do is this like individual? And am only I getting this vision? Like a um, okay. Scary. So you is literally just going insane. And you to kill okay? People. Okay, you yeah. and the president got this vision, <laughs> so you have all of his resources. Ah, uh, good. Me and Joe Biden over here. Yeah. <laughs> to start no, talking about yeah. babies. They're gonna Joe take Biden him be seriously. The first one that's dead. <laughs> All right, the president in this fictional universe where he's super smart and competent and he's like, look, the only point with that is he's trying to say you have all the government's resources at your disposal. So you have like nukes and any any gotcha. tools you would but, need to but do But wait, this. is it only immortality for you and the president then or is it for the entire uh, for rest of the human race? People. The secret hmm. to immortality is unlocked. You know how to do it, how to figure so it out. What are you what are the odds that Hitler was in on this secret then? <laughs> he was just trying to get started. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, what's an acceptable number to you? Uh, About all of you? Because the fuck thing is, whoever you kill is also going to miss out on immortality. Yeah, that's so, why you'd have to. You, if if we could like coordinate choose, with like a yeah. death note, you could just pick all of like the world's really worst criminals, like yeah, like mm. the actual worst people in the fucking world. And you could start there and hope that by the time you're through that massive list, it's enough yeah, to unlock have to mortality. triage. Mm. So you could start with people who are already suicidal and then go through like, okay, this, you know, your life is still has some meaning, but okay, you have cancer and you applied for euthanasia. Okay, how about we kill you instead for the good of humanity? Put those people on a list and then you could take all the people of violent criminal offenses um, See, I I we would could take start everyone working at tax offices. I would hmm? start. I would start. I think it's a better decision. I'd start with anyone over the age of ninety. Well, well that's kind of fucked up though, because if immortality is coming to everyone, I yeah. mean, yeah, age they, means nothing. Yeah, there's just you missed the much window. Gonna benefit. Too late. Sorry, <laughs> you missed the bus. If anything, they get yeah, the most out of it. Yeah, yeah, they would. Well, why would they get the most actually? Well, because they were already about to die, whereas like a toddler still has 90 years of life ahead of her if she doesn't get the immortality. True, yeah. Hmm. I guess it would depend on if it's immortality where you stay the age you are or not. Even I if it was, I still feel... You terminal cancer. <laughs> oh yeah, you have to experience that for the rest of your life. <laughs> Melt away. Oh, and then there's genuinely no way out as well now? Oh no, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, can you kill, kill yourself? Well, uh, immortality doesn't mean invin afterwards. being invincible, so I imagine people would still yeah. be able to, like, get killed. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I don't know why well, I'm yeah. talking about this, like, the decision would be up to us and not, like, a bunch of Elysium elites who would literally oh, yeah, guess no, we, all we're of us in a heartbeat. We're definitely dead first. We are yeah. dead yeah. first, yeah. boys. 
We don't have a chance, well, yeah. Maybe we could start with, like, like if that wasn't enough, like, all of those lists of, like, the, the super criminals and shit, you could then go by, like, number of tweets and work I backwards. was actually going to say the same thing. Yeah, go to, go to Twitter <laughs> power users first. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, new question. You get the you get the secret of immortality from this thing and the president's help on anything you need, but you have to personally, with your bare hands, kill 10 people. Okay. Yeah, so again, can they, can yeah, they just really be like... That's really not a big deal. Yeah, can they still be like the super violent, awful, absolutely repulsive yeah, shit stains? It, like well, just, uh, violent criminals and all yeah, that? Yeah, but they'd probably fight back, wouldn't they? Well, I'm assuming, oh. like, you'd give me I'm some kind right. of advantage state, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd probably yeah. just <laughs> drop you me in the middle of ten people. <laughs> you have to add it. I'm not John Wick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you just put me in, like, the executioner's room and the perps are all, like, ten cartel members, like, yeah, I'd flip the switch. What do I give a shit? Fuck them. I'm not gonna cry at night. I'd do it for free. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, this is let's some wrap. cheerful music for the topic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, music's going hard for this one. All right, we we got to wrap. We got to go to a meeting. Um, thank you everyone for hanging out with us. And let us know how many people it would take you to kill to get immortality. What, what's the limit? What 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 is the perfect number? Um, other than that, patreoncom slash the official podcast for bonus episodes, bonus content, hundreds of hours of additional episodes over there. Uh, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thanks, bye everyone. Bye-bye.